Hey guys! In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I propagate my string of hearts succulent plant to be more full. Here's just a quick side by side of what it looks like before on the right and after on the left. From the time I got my very first string of hearts plant, and I tried to propagate it, I just would take cuttings from the plant and end up with this long piece of string of heart that I would put in water, root, and then put in a plant. It was like I only had a couple of strands of string of hearts, a bare, empty, like very small, tiny plant. But I stumbled across this method a few times on Instagram called the butterfly propagation method. I thought I would show you the process from start to finish, how I propagate my string of hearts plants so that they're more full instead of just one strand of string of hearts. If that's how you like your plants, that's great, but I just prefer a more full looking plant. So if you're looking for a more full string of plant, here's how I do it. First things first, you're going to need a container to propagate in. I personally use a little Tupperware thing. You really can use any container you want. I just prefer to use Tupperware because it's see-through so I can kind of keep better tabs on what's happening to the roots as the plants propagate. I can like peek at the bottom and see if there's any roots forming yet. And this is what I mean for those of us that are really nosy about plant roots when they're propagating. So water propagators especially will appreciate this, I feel. Uh, you really can just see what's going on down there and it's very satisfying, I must say. But if you don't wanna use a clear container, that's totally fine too. It's just gonna be a little more difficult to see how far along your plant roots are coming, you know? I personally prefer to use sphagnum moss to propagate. I have a big thing for sphagnum moss lately, and what I do is I soak the sphagnum moss in liquider plant food so that the sphagnum has nutrients for the string of hearts roots to absorb once the roots begin to form, and it does help them root a little more quickly, although this totally isn't like necessary. I will add a layer of the sphagnum to the bottom of the Tupperware container. You want to propagate them in a container roughly the same size as the pot you're later going to want to put it into. This pot is roughly the same size as the Tupperware. As long as it's close, you can make it work. Then you're gonna add your little layer of wet sphagnum to the bottom of the Tupperware. Then you're going to take cuttings from your string of hearts plant, snip the longer vines um, that are like dangling down that don't have any roots on them. You're going to snip those off and then divide it up by each pair of leaves. There's a vine and then they have the leaves um, on either side. That's the butterfly. So you're going to cut in between each set of those leaves and lay them down onto the sphagnum. Just kind of evenly spread across the top. You don't have to add too many of these because it will fill in on its own. The longer you leave it in here, of course, the more it's gonna fill in, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, this is about how many I tend to propagate with, and I do leave them in the container for a few months so that it fills in to what you see me pot up at the end of this video. Once the plant has formed enough roots, the little butterfly cuttings are actually going to shoot out vines. So they're not going to stay those butterfly things. They will end up getting long as well. And you'll end up with a vining, full, beautiful string of hearts plant that you can propagate some more if you want to, which is what I do usually. Well, I'm just gonna try and show you what I'm talking about. So here you can see there's that little rhizome ball thing. Um, this leaf right here is the initial cutting I took and put in. It has by now shot out new growth out the side and I end up with a bit of a vine. This one's a little bit shorter. Some of them do end up longer, but um, not all of them will do that as quickly as some of the others, but they will end up doing it over time with enough light and of course with enough water. So yeah. So then I keep this in a room with a south facing window. I'm just pulled a few feet back from the window. It needs to get really good lighting so that the foliage and roots come in very healthy. Basically all I do is once I notice the sphagnum is like almost completely dry, I'll go ahead and add more water, let the sphagnum soak it up, and I'll continue adding water until the sphagnum isn't absorbing anymore. Uh, you'll be able to see, especially if you, if you use a clear container, you'll be able to see at the bottom of the container if there's like water just sloshing around down there. Once I notice the water isn't absorbing up anymore, I will just hold my plant in like this, uh, like turn it upside down, drain out the excess water, put it back in its spot and wait for the sphagnum to dry out again. How the plant is going to root. It develops, they develop these little round ball things. You should be seeing it on the screen now. I don't know what they're called. I'm not a sciencey person. I'm so sorry. I should have looked it up, I guess. And that's actually where 
the roots are going to form out of. So yeah, once you start noticing that, then you know the plant is doing some things. In a, about a month, you should have pretty adequate roots to put it into soil. All I do is I will wet the so wet the sphagnum moss in the plant. Uh, it just makes it easier to pull out of the Tupperware because you want it to come out in like one piece, really. You don't want to be pulling it apart. It'll just damage the plants. It'll damage the roots. You can see in this clip that the roots do get very substantial. They grow super, super quickly and tangle up with each other. So there's really no way to separate it like individually. So just keep that in mind. Then you are going to, of course, with regular potting soil, just whatever soil you use for string of hearts typically or succulent plants typically. I didn't mention in the video, but I do mix my own soil. Currently I'm using cocoa coir, leca balls, uh, pumice, orchid bark, and charcoal for my soil mix. I'll have everything I use linked in the description box. Go ahead and fill up the container so that there's room for you to squeeze that extra piece of string of heart and sphagnum that you peeled out of the bottom of the Tupperware. And you're just gonna put that on top of the soil. Easy as that. I put the entire thing in there. So then it's not disrupting the roots too much to remove the sphagnum moss off of the roots. You know, like that can really stress out the roots. But if you just put it over the top like that, the roots are going to start growing into the soil on their own as, as you water them in. It's just going to put a lot, lot less stress on the plant. I know some people don't like the look of the sphagnum up top, but I promise you the plant will fill in to a point that you don't even see the sphagnum moss anymore. And that does happen. It doesn't take forever to ha for that to happen. So don't worry about that. That will go away. You won't be able to see it for too long. And you're just going to continue watering it as normal. Once you notice the sphagnum is dry, water it. Easy as that. I will say as I'm propagating string of hearts, I do like to give them a little bit higher light than they would need just like to survive once it's already rooted. So you can go ahead and move it a little bit farther back from the light. Once you've potted up your plant, you have it in the pot, the roots are there already. You don't have to leave it in the same spot, of course. Um, giving it a little bit higher light as it's rooting just helps ensure that everything's gonna go smoothly, more quickly, and in a more healthy way. That is how I propagate my String of Hearts plants so that they look more full. If you have any additional tips, please leave them down below. Let me know what you think. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.